New York Police Department headquarters getting a taste of some angry protesters when a large crowd showed up at NYPD to protest the police for arresting 108 people who were taking over Columbia University. The university called in for help to disband a massive anti-Israel protest just a day after the school's president testified on the Hill about anti-Semitism. Watch. I'm just standing here. Why are you doing this to me? Oh my gosh. Police charged the students with trespassing and two of them with obstructing law enforcement. The mayor and the NYPD commissioner describe a very chaotic scene. What occurred was about 500 students left their classrooms, surrounded the quad, and were telling us to, we're the KKK, we should go kill ourselves, we're baby killers, and, and everything else you can imagine. It, it was sad, it was very sad to see. You should not be using inflammatory comments like we saw. It was very vile, some of the comments that were made. Uh, and our institutions, I believe, should use this moment as a teaching moment. Uh, they came out of the classrooms to do that. Mayor, with all due respect, I don't think they're interested in a teaching lesson. Among those arrested, the daughter of Minnesota Congresswoman Ilhan Omar was seen right on that Columbia campus. Now, that's not her school. Here she is after she was released, smiling and hugging her friend. She does not go to Columbia, as I mentioned. She was suspended, actually, from her own school, Barnard College. Omar's fellow squad members far left were very angry. Jamal Bowman said suspending Omar's daughter was a political reprisal. Rashida Tlaib called the arrest appalling. In focus now, Jason Rance, Seattle radio host. Now, I have to imagine, because I, I know your show, I've done it myself as a guest, I've uh, been on, you got a lot of response. I'm first curious to know, what are people saying uh, that you've been talking with? The folks I talk with are noting, number one, these are professional social justice martyrs. They like to be victimized. And so they show up and they go over the top with the expectation mm. that they're going to get arrested, pretend that that wasn't the expectation, and then use this as a moment to radicalize other younger people, usually disillusioned youth who are upset about their job prospects right out of college, to join this movement. I mean, at the end of the day, when you start paying attention to some of the language, it's not just merely anti-Israel. These are anti-capitalists who are taking advantage. And what we're seeing here, and I think it's so interesting, it is parallel to what we saw with the BLM and Antifa movement. You've got the entitled kids mixed with the disillusioned ones. You've got the ones that escalate the violence. They get what they portray to be an overreaction from police. And then the next day and the next day and the hmm. next day, they start to see what they can do. They start to test it out. And if the NYPD in this case, or police departments anywhere else, if they don't push back immediately for the law breaking, What's going to end up happening is they're going to have momentum on their side, on the activist side, and it's going to start to spiral until we get to another summer of love. We saw this unravel already, and wait, it's following the same script. What do you mean, summer of love? You mean, you mean you can, in your mind's eye, see somebody like a Lori Lightfoot, former mayor of Chicago, who was around at the time, you can see leadership on the far left saying, just work it out and not arresting these people? That cannot be yeah. in our future, Jason. I certainly hope it's not, but let's be clear, it was in our past, right? I mean, that's precisely Recent what it past. is we saw the last time there was, yes, a large, massive movement with a demographic that Democrats need to hang on to if they want to win this next presidential mm -hmm. election. And so you've got the politics bumping up against the public safety issues. And I do think that enough of these lawmakers who are Democrats, I don't think Democrats do not like Jews. I don't think that they're anti-Semitic. I think the progressive movement is. But when you've got to basically rely on that progressive movement to stay in power, you're going to have to make some tough choices. And I only hope hmm. that, unlike what they did during BLM, they make the smart political choices and the smart public safety choices. Yeah, it's interesting what you said. It's the progressive left that are, that are really trafficking in anti-Semitism. I'm putting yeah. that word in your mouth. But they are. They're, they're utilizing it to get what they want. And right now, they want to push on those moderates and their Democratic Party. 
uh, to bend their way. Um, Ilhan Omar's daughter, just your quick thought about that. I mean, it's like a legacy of hate against Jews at this point. I mean, you've, you've got her mom yeah. and the comments that she's made that are anti-Semitic, and then you have her daughter in a crowd that's yelling for Hamas. I mean, turn up the volume on some of that stuff. It's in English. I'm assuming she's very proud of her daughter right now. This is precisely the kind of kid that she raised, the kind of kid who fights for Hamas, pretends that Israelis or at least isn't are a proud the aggressors. Who is. Well, she's clearly on this side. I mean, look, if you were someone who wanted to take a nuanced position on this and wanted to have a conversation about Israel's response and you could have disagreements in policy, fine. But when you're showing up to crowds that are screaming about an intifada, screaming that yeah. they side with Hamas, the crowd that's saying Iran was right to strike over the, the, the last weekend, I think that says more about the individual than it does about this entire movement that they might yeah. want to say that they're a part of. These are people who are radical. End of story. It doesn't yep. seem that difficult to understand because the people who are the nuance, they're not showing up to these rallies. Yeah, it's like I used to say, Dr. King didn't march at 3 a.m. It was at 3 p.m. or earlier, and he prayed during the thing. So when all that was going on post-George yeah. Floyd, we knew so much of it had nothing to do with equality, George Floyd, or Precisely. any of the rest. And none of this is feeding the Palestinian people. All right, I want to get this in because we had Senator Ron Johnson of Wisconsin talking about this on the program yesterday. Let's watch. What troubles me is just the double standard. You know, we have at least a dual system of justice. Uh, in this case, you know, this free speech is completely allowed. I mean, can you imagine if, if uh, these were people with the red MAGA hats on blocking highways? The, the left-wing protesters, the pro-Hamas group, uh, we have left-wing groups bailing them out if there is any kind of arrest. Jason, your last thoughts. Yeah, he's 100 percent correct. And what's really important for folks to pay attention to is not necessarily the arrests, but whether or not they get charged. And then when they get charged, mm. go forward a few weeks. Are there plea deals? Do they end up getting pled down to some misdemeanor that doesn't actually matter? These people are not going to spend any time in jail. But will they get hit with a severe enough penalty where it actually matters and serves as a disincentive for other people in the group? And so, since I doubt that's really going to happen, what I'm mm. all about is naming and shaming. The people who end up getting arrested for this kind of stuff, the ones who are saying the most vicious comments, let's name them. Let's tell the world yeah. who they are. And they can either stand with their anti-Semitism or go down with the ship. Well, and good luck finding jobs in the future because it's all on video. Yep. Uh, Jason Rance, thank you.